God says, see, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. Good morning. God is indeed doing new things, and we are celebrating our Creator God this morning as we worship today here at Russellville First United Methodist Church. This is Trinity Sunday, and we celebrate all of the creation that God has made, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. My name is Cindy Bright. I am the pastor of youth and families here in this fine congregation. And I, along with your other pastors, staff, and worship team, know that you had a lot of choices to where to be this morning. And so we are so grateful that you have chosen to join us in worship. For God is indeed with us. And we pray that you'll be blessed by your time with us this morning. We also want to invite you to come back on Tuesday at 7 p.m. in the large parking lot here at the church where there will be a time for public prayer as we seek to respond to all of the events that are going on in our world today. We ask that those who attend would observe all social distancing requirements and please plan to wear your masks as well. Let's go to God in prayer as we begin our worship this morning. Creating God, we praise you for your word, which called the universe into being, and for your spirit, which breathed life into your human creation, made in your image. We praise you that in your love you seek to embrace us in our brokenness, that while your only son was handed over to death, you raised him to life, a new creation by which you recreate each of us as we believe in hope and accept in faith. Source of life, word of life, breath of life, we worship you. Amen. Oh, you. 
we fall on our knees as we humbly proclaim, you are amazing God. You was told every lightning bolt where it should go, or seen heavenly storehouses laden with stars in the sky and you know them by name you are amazing god all powerful untamable all struck we fall on our knees as we humbly proclaim you are amazing god incomparable unchangeable you see the depth My name is Paige Phillips, and I'm the director of uh, children's and families ministries here at Russellville First. And um, children, I want you to think, well, I, I guess you big people can think about this too, of a time when you made something. You drew something, you painted something, and you were so excited. You thought, this is really good, and you wanted someone else to see it, and you wanted them to think it was good too. Um, as a, a mom and a wife, that kind of comes out to me now when I cook something. I think, oh, this is going to be so good. I can't wait for my family to taste it, and I really want them to think it's good too. Um, so that made me think about the scripture today. And the scripture today comes from Genesis 1 and part of 2. So it's the very first words in the Bible. I think, I think that's pretty cool. And it's creation. It's God creating the world. And there's so much order. He says, um, let, let there be light. There's light. And then he says it's good. So that there's a pattern. You know, he says, let this happen. And it does. And then he says it's good. Uh, and it's, it's all by his voice, which I, I really love that, too. So that, that's our Sunday school today. Just a little, you know, check that out. Um, but so there, there was all this pattern and, and order, and he's creating almost like this big nest for the last thing he creates, and that is people. Um, and I kept reading this part um, it's so funny, you know, when you've, you've heard a story a lot, but, but then God will show you something new. And it says, um, let us create people in our image. And, um, and so that says to us that at creation, in that, that moment, there was God the Father, the Creator, and um, the scripture that we'll hear in just a little bit talks about the spirit hovering over the water. So God the spirit was there. Uh, and in the book of John, in that first chapter, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And word is another name for Jesus. So Jesus is there too. Um, and so I feel like I've always been caught up in when I hear image of what people look like. Um, and so, you know, I think we think about that. Uh, how tall or short are people? What color is their hair? Um, what does their skin look like? And I don't think that's what God wants us to do at all. 
when he said in the image of God the Father and God the Spirit and God the Son, he's talking about the love and joy and peace that we um, as people created by God reflect. And so this week, you may not see a whole lot of people, right? Um, But when you do see people and when you think about people, I hope that you think of them as created by God and that he thinks we're good and he wants us to think we're good too. Will you please pray with me? Dear God, we praise you as our creator. We thank you for the gift of your word. We thank you for loving us no matter what. And we ask that you please help us to love others the way that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our scripture reading for this morning is a lengthy one, and so I've invited a few of my friends to join me in the reading today. You'll be hearing from Macy Cooper, L. James Hodges, Garen Scartvet, and Kate Shamblin. The scripture is Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, through chapter 2, verse 4. Hear now the word of the Lord. In the beginning, when God created the heavens and the earth, the earth was a formless void, and darkness covered the face of the deep, while a wind from God swept over the face of the waters. And then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw that the light was good, and God separated the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. And there was an evening and there was a morning the first day. And God said, let there be a dome in the midst of the waters and let it separate the waters from the waters. So God made the dome and separated the waters that were under the dome from the waters that were above the dome. And it was so. God called the dome sky and there was evening and there was morning the second day. And God said, Let the waters under the sky be gathered together into one place, and let the dry land appear. And it was so. God called the dry land earth, and the waters that were gathered together he called seas. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, Let the earth put forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind on earth that bear fruit with the seed in it. And it was so. The earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed of every kind, and trees of every kind bearing fruit with the seed in it. And God saw that it was good. And there was evening and there was morning the third day. And God said, Let there be lights in the vault of the sky to separate the day from the night, and let them serve as signs to mark sacred times and days and years, and let them be lights in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth. And it was so. God made two great lights, the greater light to govern the day and the lesser light to govern the night. He also made the stars. God set them in the vault of the sky to give light on the earth to govern the night and the day and to separate light from the darkness. And God saw that it was good and there was evening and there was morning the fourth day. God said, let the waters bring forth swarms of living creatures and let birds fly above the earth across the dome of the sky. So God created the great sea monsters and every living creature that moves of every kind with which the waters swarm and every winged bird of every kind. And God saw it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters in the seas and let birds multiply on the earth. And there was evening and there was morning, the fifth day. And God said, let the earth bring forth living creatures of every kind, cattle and creeping things and wild animals of the earth and every kind. And it was so. God made the wild animals of the earth of every kind and the cattle of every kind and everything that creeps upon the ground of every kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make humankind in our image according to our likeliness and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over the cattle and over all the wild animals of the earth 
and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created humankind in his image. In the image of God, he created them. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them, and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply, and fill the earth and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. God said, See, I have given you every plant yielding seed that is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree with the seed in its fruit, you shall have them for food. And to every beast of the earth, and to, and to every bird of the air, and to everything that creeps on the earth, everything that has the breath of life, I have given every green plant for food. And it was so. God saw, God saw everything, and God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. And there was evening, and there was morning, the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished, and all their multitude. And on the seventh day, God finished the work that he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day and hallowed it, because on it God rested from all the work that he had done in creation. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Good morning. My name is Tony Griffin, and I'm senior pastor of Russellville First United Methodist Church, and I am so glad that you are worshiping with us this morning. And I want to thank Pastor Cindy and the youth for helping us with the scripture today. Wasn't that great to see them and to enjoy having them help us with worship? Well, today is Trinity Sunday, the feast that transitions us into the season after Pentecost. The season after Pentecost is the longest season in the Christian calendar. And it starts next Sunday, and it's a season of growth and reflection. And today we start the sermon series, God's Creative Connection, to take us into that season. Last Sunday, Pentecost Sunday, we saw the creative agency of the Holy Spirit that took a group of people that spoke different languages and brought them together and united them in mission. But even as God is doing a new thing, we know that this creative spirit has been at work since the very beginning of time. From the creation of the world to the creative ways that God works with us now to connect humanity. So today we jump into the book of Genesis to learn more about how God works creatively to redeem humanity, to restore the created order to its original very good status, to reconnect what we have divided. And God's vision, the vision of a world of persons connected to one another and to God will be realized even if God has to use some very creative things to make it happen. So be in prayer about how God wants you to respond during this sermon series. And this week, be sure to read the book of Genesis so that you'll have that grounding as we delve more deeply into God's creative connections. Let us pray. Creative God, we come to you today seeking to hear from your word. Speak to us again your word of life and hope. For we ask this in the name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we have two amazing photographers on the Arkansas Conference of the United Methodist Church, two pastors. And I'm sure there are others, but these guys do a great job job taking these wonderful nature photographs. It's the Reverend Rodney Steele and the Reverend Stephen Coburn. Stephen, of course, is our district superintendent, and each of them does amazing work with the natural backdrop and beauty of Arkansas. It seems to be their preferred subject matter, and I love what they do with it. In fact, this week when we had a clergy gathering for prayer with Stephen, he chose as his Zoom background a beautiful wooded picture that is a, is a path through the woods in Arkansas. 
And Reverend Steele and Reverend Coburn have used this wonderful talent of theirs to put, put these beautiful things together and, and to sell them to raise money for 200,000 Reasons that Seeks to Eliminate Childhood Hunger in Arkansas. It's a, it's a wonderful way to use their gifts. And more often than not, it seems like their work involves water. We have so many wonderful aquatic scenes in our state from the lakes to the streams to the rivers. And recently, my family kayaked on the Mulberry River for the first time. And we couldn't help but be mesmerized by that beautiful water. And then the contrast of the green Ozark forest and the beautiful blue sky. And I have to tell you, we did all right um, out of three boats, two out of the three turned over. I won't tell you who stayed up, but I think he's a pretty good kayaker if you, if you want to ask me about it. But anyway, I couldn't help but think of those beautiful scenes as we look into the Scripture and we think about God's creative power. I, I love this story of creation, and I vacillated to tell you the truth about reading the entire thing, but when the, when the youth... I agreed to help tell that story. I thought, man, what a wonderful way to do that. And didn't you love hearing them today? This text, I want to remind you, is the first of two creation stories depicted in the Bible. In fact, as most of you know, this is the first story in the biblical canon as we have received it. It's the very first words. And what a story it is. You can almost stop with the opening phrase, in the beginning, God. I mean, you could just stop there. In the beginning, God. God is the one behind it all. It's been said that to get to your desired location, it matters where you start. And if we're going to talk about the Trinity on this Trinity Sunday, we're going to talk about the work of God the Father, God the Son, and God the Spirit, then we need to start where it all began with God. And one destination for this Sunday is to reflect on the nature of the Trinity. We want to grow more deeply in our understanding and recognition of the Trinity. One God and three persons. So it makes perfect sense to start with God. But I got to tell you the truth. It's not unusual for senior pastors to pass this Sunday off to an associate to preach. Why? Because who on earth can preach one sermon about the Trinity and, and, and communicate the power and the mystery and make sense of this ever-perplexing mystery of the Holy Trinity in one sermon? You just can't do it. It's almost a joke that the liturgical calendar plays on us. But it does make sense as a transitional feast to the season after Pentecost. Because God in three persons is the culmination of this mystery. If a goal of the liturgical calendar is to have us follow and seek to live the pattern of life, death, resurrection, and ascension of Jesus Christ, then it seems fitting to reflect on the role of Jesus Christ in the Godhead, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And one sermon that delves into the nature of one God in three persons, to borrow the words of the great theologian Paul Tillich, is an impossible possibility. But we're going to give it a go, nonetheless. As Carol Crumbly points out, the Book of Common Prayer quotes from the obscure creed of St. Athanasius. It begins, We worship one God in Trinity, and Trinity in unity neither confounding the persons nor dividing the substance. Then trying try to further clarify the three persons, the creed continues with this. The Father uncreate, okay, another word for begotten, right? The Father uncreate, the Son uncreate, and the Holy Ghost uncreate. The Father incomprehensible, the Son incomprehensible, and the Holy Ghost incomprehensible. And yet, there are not three incomprehensibles, nor three uncreated, but one uncreated and one incomprehensible. Clear as a bell, right? I mean, you've got it. I mean, you understand the Trinity totally now. I mean, my goodness, this just leaves you rubbing your head and going, oh my goodness, how do I make sense out of that? The Catechism, which is an outline of the faith found in the same book, the Book of Common Prayer, gives a simpler answer. 
Catechisms, you know, historically were written in question and answer form to help young Christians better understand key doctrines in the life of faith. So it says this, question, what is the Trinity? Answer, the Trinity is one God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That answer is at least more succinct. We as United Methodists don't have an official catechism, but Methodist theologians William Abraham and David Watson have written one in their book called Key United Methodist Beliefs. It says this, question, who is God of all creation? Answer, the God of all creation is the Holy Trinity. Question, what does it mean to say that God is the Trinity? Answer, It means that God is three persons of one substance, power, and eternity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Question, who are the three persons of the Trinity? Answer, Christians have long known them as Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Question, why is is it important to know God as the Trinity? Answer, Because God has acted through all three persons of the Trinity for our salvation. Question, are the three persons of the Trinity equal to one another? Answer, the three persons of the Trinity are equal to one another because they are one and the same God. Question, how do the three persons of the Trinity differ from one another? Answer, The three persons differ from one another as follows. A, God the Father is neither begotten nor proceeding from any other person. B, God the Son from all eternity is begotten from the Father. C, God the Holy Spirit from all eternity proceeds from the Father. I mean, you just want to go, whoa, boom, right? I mean, incredible. It's tough stuff. In the end... All we can say about the Trinity, all the explanation we give, these are important things to delve into, but they can only be revealed as a spiritual mystery to a spiritual heart. Perhaps where we're starting today is as good as any place to start with the Trinity. And certainly in regard to God's deep creative connection with humankind. It was just last week on Pentecost Sunday, right? Where we talked about this group that couldn't speak the same language, yet they heard one another in the same language. And this powerful fire of the Spirit came upon them and connected them in mission for the spread of God's kingdom. So today we go back to the beginning, literally the beginning of the Bible, literally the beginning of time. God spoke at Pentecost in the power of the Holy Spirit, and today we see God's creative holy power spoken into existence. Now I want you to know some interesting things about this passage. I think these are things that are are helpful. First, as scholar Richard Boyce reminds us, While Genesis 1 constitutes the beginning of the Old Testament canon, it does not constitute the beginning of the story as initially developed. Rather, the story begins in the development of another story, another story of darkness and chaos and division in the waters of Exodus 15, where we find some of the oldest scripture. In other words, the story of the parting of the waters of the Red Sea or the Reed Reed Sea the exodus this story has its roots in that and second when we look for the setting of this creation story we find that most scholars point to the time of the babylonian exile in other words it was during another time of chaos and another set of waters the tigris and the euphrates that gives birth to the tradition of this story to this tradition of origins to this formative story about humankind When you've been torn away from order, you've been torn away from the temple, and you are out of the order of your homeland, you seek ways of bringing order back to your life. The created order offers that hope to the people. And so you get this recitation of this marvelous story of a people's origin in God. You can, con- you can connect this and see this even in translation with phrases like this because it's a, it's a hymnic song. It's, a, it's almost like a sing-song, right? 
there was evening and there was morning. There was evening and there was morning. It's repeated, right? God saw it was good. God saw it was good. It's got this kind of hymnic sing-song nature so that it can get in your bones. And then you have this set of three days that talks about the, the, ha- the habitation, the, the garden, the area. The, the, I'm sorry, the second, form, the second story is about the garden. The three days forming the habitat, rather. And the three days forming the inhabitants. See how that balance is there. You can hear a leader leading the people in this song of origins. But not, this is not just the story of that one people, the Israelite people. It's the story of all humankind. It's a story that is at once very particular, yet transcendent. And third, I want you to note this about the story. Notice the call to humankind to participate as they're called to be fruitful and to multiply, as well as have dominion, quote, have dominion over the created order. Now, this word that's translated here as dominion is not about domination, but rather about stewardship and flourishing. In other words, humankind is called as co-creators in this creative process that has its origin in God. And don't you love the way the biblical account speaks about God speaking. We were spoken into creation, called into relationship. In the beginning, when God created or began to create, the Spirit of God hovered over the deep. God called forth life out of chaos. God spoke. Notice the feminine in imagery of the watery womb, a cosmic womb. The words here are interesting. In the Hebrew Scriptures, the word Ba-ra is used only to describe the creative activity of God. And God's breath or spirit, God's ruach, hovers over the womb-like space, moving deliberately, blowing creatively, spoken into creation. God's voice orders the heavens and the earth, orders everything and creates everything. The word calls the creation forth with the intention and will. It says, let there be, let us make. Now, Paige pointed that out, right? That's interesting. We think of one God and it says, let us make. Now, now we can't go back and read over the us in, into it totally because that would be anachronism, right? Because there was no Christian doctrine of the Trinity back at the time that this scripture was written. But to some extent, it's out of this notion, like Paige noted, out of this notion of God as creative community that forms foundations of the Christian doctrine of the Trinity. Carol Crumley reminds us of a powerful piece of art that's helpful in this regard and I I apologize we had some trouble with the slide trying to to get it the slide was too big but we wanted to bring that art to you this morning it's a it's a piece called the holy trinity by the 15th century russian artist andrei rublev and i hope that you will take time today to search for rublev's holy trinity that will take you to this picture and as the story goes Rublev, through praying with Scripture, began to understand the three messengers who visited Abraham and Sarah in another story in Genesis and announced the future birth of a child to the old couple as precursors of the Holy Trinity of later Christian doctrine. And if you look at the picture, you'll notice that he draws these three powerful figures. And they're seated around three sides of a square table. And there's an opening right in front as you're viewing it. So any person viewing the painting sees that opening there at the table and the three persons around the table. So when you gaze upon the image, you're aware of this vast silence that engulfs the Trinity. Three, yet they're one. And then the fourth side of this table that's left open intentionally by Rublev is an invitation to anyone viewing it to join the Trinity at the table. It's an invitation to draw near, to even sit with the Holy Trinity and join in this intimate connection, this intimate conversation 
taking place around the table. It gives a profound sense of a, a call to complete the divine circle by participating in the Trinity. We were spoken into creation and called into relationship. One of my favorite spiritual writers, you know, is Henry Nouwen. I've shared with you works from now and before. And I've shared with you that he's a, a Dutch priest and a theologian, and he is a wonderful writer. And, and, it, and it happens that he spent many hours gazing upon this painting that Rublev created. And it was during a time in his life where he was experiencing severe depression, a very dark and difficult time. And he writes about this journey of contemplation while gazing upon Ru Rublev's Holy Trinity over the course of many months. And he writes this down in a book called Beyond, Behold the Beauty of the Lord. And he says that gradually, over the period of months of gazing upon that icon, that he began to see the Trinity as a divine community of love, a house of love. In that house, there's no fear. There's no violence. There's no anxiety. There's no pain. There's no suffering, not even words, just love. Just love and trust. Now and said, it's a house in which I could dwell forever. Isn't that beautiful? A house in which we can dwell forever. We were spoken into creation and called into relationship. Lest we think that our call into relationship is only solemn and difficult, then we should listen to how the great 14th century mystic Meister Eckhart speaks of the Trinity. He wrote that God the Father laughed and the Son was born. Then the two of them laughed and the Spirit was born. When all three laughed, human being was born. You see, at the heart of the universe is joy. It's joy that only God can provide through his amazing love. We need to know this in the very depths of our soul. We need to know this during a time of hurt and confusion. We need to know this as we wander and we wonder about things. Whether, will they ever be made right? But we know that in this divine community, a community of love, that there's no violence, there's no fear, there's no anxiety, there's no pain, there's no words even. Just love. Love and trust. We were spoken into being and called into relationship. My brothers and sisters, that's the call upon us today. To recognize that he spoke us into being. And he's called us into relationship. Relationship with the God of the universe and relationship with one another. Let us seek that relationship today and always. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My brothers and sisters, as we go into a time of prayer, I ask that you would call to mind those whom God has put on your heart this week, part of being a church, part of being the community of Jesus Christ is to lift one another in prayer and to praise God for all that he has done in our lives. So let us go to the Lord in prayer. God of delight, your wisdom sings your word at the crossroads where humanity and divinity meet. Invite us into your joyful being where you know and are known in each beginning, in all sustenance, and in every redemption, that we may manifest your unity in the diverse life that we live and in ministry that you entrust to us, truly reflecting your triune majesty in the faith that acts, in the hope that does not disappoint, and in the love that endures. 
It is out of that love that we lift to you in prayer the church and the world. My brothers and sisters, I ask your prayers for God's people throughout the world, for our bishop and all bishops, for this gathering and for all ministers and people. Pray for the church. I ask your prayers for peace, for goodwill, and for the well-being of all people. Pray for justice and peace. I ask your prayers for the poor, the sick, the hungry, the oppressed, and those in prison. Pray for those in any need or trouble. I ask your prayers for all who seek God or a deeper knowledge of him. Pray that they may find and be found by him. Praise God for those in every generation in whom Christ has been honored. Pray that we may have the grace to glorify Christ in our own day. God, whose fingers sculpt the sun and curl the baby's ear. Spirit brooding over chaos before the naming of day. Savior, sending us to earth's ends with water and words. Startle us with grace. Love us. Guide us. Draw us into the communion of your unity and diversity that we may live to the praise of your majestic name. Hear us as we pray the prayer you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Well, this morning, as a part of our praise to God, we offer our tithes and offerings, and so I hope that you will continue your faithfulness in giving to the church and its mission and its ministry. We are seeking to make disciples who love God and love others, and you are a crucial part of that. So we'll bring up a slide that reminds you of ways that you can give. Look on your screen, you'll see that you can call the church office, the number there to set up a bank draft. You can click the Give Now button at russellvillefirst.org. You can text and give at the number there on your screen. Or you can mail a, church to the, uh, mail a check to the church office, and, or, or you can use the Simple Give app as well. So I want you to remember those things, and we are so grateful for your faithfulness in the way that you support God's ministry through Russellville First. Let us pray for our tithes and offerings. Almighty God, we offer our gifts in gratitude this morning, not just for what you do in our lives, but for who you are in our lives. You are with us in the person of the Father, the God above us, and you come to meet us as the Son, as God beside us. And you empower us to do the work of your kingdom by the Holy Spirit, God within us, providing strength and boldness that we could never, ever have on our own. May these gifts be tools that make the transformation of the world a reality. We pray this in the name of one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
are the days of great trials, of famine and darkness and sword. Still we are the voice in the desert, crying, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun, at the trumpet call, so lift your voice, and you hear of Jubilee, and out of science his salvation comes. These are the days of Ezekiel, the dry bones becoming his flesh. These are the days of your servant. David rebuilding a temple of praise. These are the days of the harvest. The fields are white in the world. We are your laborers in your vineyard, declaring the word of the Lord. The Holy comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call. Shining like the sun at the trumpet call, so lift your voice. It's a year of jubilee, and out of science, his salvation come. Behold, he comes, riding on the clouds, shining like the sun at the trumpet call, so lift your voice. an understatement. I so look forward to the day that we are back together, all together in God's sanctuary here at Russellville First, worshiping and praising together again as the family of God. But we're doing okay, right? We're doing pretty well. We're keeping together, we're staying in the spirit, and we're seeking God's power and presence in all that we do. I'll remind you that if you haven't completed your covenant card, we consecrated, we prayed over those covenant cards last Sunday. There's still time to turn those in. You can go online at russellvillefirst.org. You can come by and pick up a copy and fill that out. Be in prayer about that. If you haven't done that, please do that. And I'll remind you that there's 
Faith at Home immediately after this, Sunday School class immediately after this. So go to the Faith at Home tab at brusselvillefirst.org. And as Pastor Cindy told you, we're hosting a time of prayer this Tuesday at 7 p.m. in the parking lot. We will social distance. We will wear masks. But it is certainly a time to go, a time to draw together, to humble humble ourselves and confess and pray for one another. So I look forward to that time. It's the brainchild of the Reverend Michael Lowenberg at Wesley United Methodist Church, and he's called a number of churches throughout our town to come together for that time of prayer. We look forward to that. My brothers and sisters, you were spoken into creation and called into relationship with God and with one another. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us and will remain with us forevermore. And all of God's people said, Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.